Welcome in this video where we're going to focus on meta learning, few shot learning. Uh, so of course that's useful in a lot of uh, domain in machine learning uh, and especially at the moment uh, in, in everything related to large language model. Uh, so yeah, that's very really useful. Um, in this video, we're going to focus on the mammal paper. In a previous video, I already implemented the reptile paper. So if you're interested in meta learning, you may uh, want to check this video as well. So yeah, let's dive in, we'll implement this, uh, this paper, very great paper. These are the results we'll get by the end of this video. So basically we want to MLP uh, to uh, run this function uh, in red. So given a position X, we want to predict the uh, F of X, so the value of Y. Um, basically if we have uh, not enough, few, uh, even though it seems like a very simple task, if we don't have enough, uh, enough data point X, uh, our neural network uh, cannot run this function. But if we use meta learning, um, the neural network can learn uh, to solve this task. So to learn the task of uh, fitting a sinusoidal function uh, and therefore uh, using uh, meta learning uh, allows to solve this problem while it, uh, it cannot be solved without meta learning. Uh, and of course it's a, a toy problem, but it's similar to a lot of applications in real life where you might have uh, not enough data uh, on a given task. Uh, but if you are if you learn, uh, if you train your, your uh, if you train an algorithm that uh, that learns to uh, solve this task in particular, uh, then can generalize to uh, to new task with a few data points. So that's very useful. Uh, on uh, even on the, on this simple uh, task, uh, it shows it's uh, useful. Uh, oh, oh, useful it is. Uh, okay, so these are the results we'll get by the end of this video. Uh, I will share, of course, the uh, the, the source code. Uh, if you use the source code or if you find it useful, please leave a star on this GitHub repository. It's uh, very helpful. Uh, also, leave the thumbs up on this video and subscribe for more video related to machine learning. That being said, uh, let's dive directly into the implementation. Uh, so we'll use uh, PyTorch as usual in this channel. Uh, at some point, I may use uh, other libraries. If you're interested, just let me know in the comments. Uh, we'll use uh, Matplotlib also for putting the results. Okay, so we can start by simply uh, creating an MLP. So we'll not use uh, uh, um, nn.linear dot linear from Py. Well, we are using uh, linear from um, uh, from um, from Torch, but I'm not creating a custom uh, MLP class. Uh, so basically, I'm uh, like writing things in a f uh, functional programming way, where we take the parameters of the model as input. That will make the implementation uh, easier. But if you have a uh, if you want to implement it in another way, uh, you are more than welcome to make a pull request. But for now, I think that's the best way to do things. So basically, we, we define MLP that takes some uh, par, um, some input x, uh, and the, we take also the parameters theta or params of the MLP, and then first we have a first linear layer. So with uh, the weights on the bias, uh, we um, we then have an activation function the ReLU. Then we have a second layer again with the weights on the bias, and then we have a last layer without activation function. So basically standard MLP to do regression, so no activation at the, uh, at the last layer. Okay, now we can create a task. So basically uh, the, uh, the task will represent a sinusoidal uh, function and we want, to, uh, uh, we want to train our algorithm to be able to solve uh, those tasks. So given a new task, uh, we want the, uh, the algorithm to be able to, to solve it. So the task is uh, parameterized by two uh, parameters, A and B. So A is the amplitude of the uh, sinusoidal function and B is the offset, uh, so the phase. So uh, yeah, so once we have A on B, um, we can sample data points from the task. So we sample uh, X randomly uh, between minus five and five. So this is the domain of X. Then we, we compute F of X, so Y, which is uh, this function. So just uh, the sinusoidal with a phase on uh, an amplitude. And uh, we also return the loss function that we want to use uh, to, to do the training. When this is done, we can create a function sample task. So in a standard machine learning, we usually uh, sample a batch of data points. Uh, in this case, we are kind of one layer above that. So instead of sampling uh, data points, we sample tasks. Um, so we are learning to learn. So basically we sample a task uh, and we want to, uh, to, to, to train a network to solve that task. Um, so yeah, first we sample A randomly between 0 0.1 and 5, and then we uh, sample the phase in uh, 0 and pi. So these, these are uh, this is described in the, uh, in the paper. This is basically the task used in the toy problem from the paper. Okay, so once it's done, we can uh, create the, uh, it's like the, uh, the inner uh, training loop. So basically uh, just uh, supervised uh, learning 
where we want to perform key training steps. So we take the parameters of our model, we take a task, uh, a batch size, the number of training steps, so number of epochs, uh, alpha, which is the learning rate on device, which is the CPU. Uh, I'm using the same convention as in the paper. That's why I, I call the learning rate alpha and not learning rate. So yeah, basically we, are, we iterate over a number of epochs. So uh, given our task uh, that we took as input, we sample uh, data points of, with uh, the given batch size. Then we uh, use the MLP to make prediction. We compute the loss function between the predicted value and the target value. Uh, and then we can do a gradient step. So the first thing is to do zero grad. We set back the gradient to zero to avoid gradient accumulation. We compute the gradient of the loss with respect to the parameters. And then we do the gradient step. We could have replaced all this with the uh, uh, optim.sgd, so the SGD optimizer from PyTorch. Uh, but uh, doing this is more, uh, uh, there is a, um, doing this first makes the, uh, makes the understanding easier of what's happening in the road. And also it's, uh, it's more, it's closer in terms of, if we ever look at the pseudocode from the paper, we'll uh, do that in a moment. Uh, on the equation from the paper, it's more uh, straightforward to have a look at this than just using uh, optim.sgd from PyTorch. Okay, so basically a standard uh, supervised learning loop uh, perform k training steps, so that will be the inner loop. Uh, on now we'll have a look at the outer uh, training loop. So basically now comes the MAML algorithm. So we take as input the parameters p of our model, the meta optimizer, so the optimizer that will optimize those parameters the number of inner training steps, so that will be a uh, feed to the perform k training step function, the number of epochs, so this is the number of epochs for the, uh, for the outer loop, for the mammal loop, then the, the batch size k, again alpha, that will be uh, sent to uh, this function, perform k training steps, the number of tasks, it's kind of the batch size, so during each uh, training step of the uh, outer loop, we'll sample a number of, uh, a number, uh, of tasks, and this number of tasks we use, and then the device on which we want to train. So let's go back to the paper. Maybe we can take the algorithm. Uh, and basically, we we'll just transform this uh, pseudocode uh, into code, and that would be very easy. So line one has already been done. Uh, it was about initializing the weight. It has been done outside this loop. So uh, it is P model. We've, we already have the uh, optimized, uh, well, the initialized weight. Then we can. Uh, we can iterate, um, so for the num num um, given number of epochs, we can iterate and then sample a batch of tasks. So let's do this. Uh, so first we iterate over the number of epochs, as we've seen, it was the line two in the pseudocode. Then we prepare some uh, s s some storage, uh, we'll come to them in a moment. And now we can move on to the line three in the pseudocode. So we want to sample a few tasks, uh, so 10 in, in our, uh, by default. Uh, and then we will uh, we'll do one gradient step on those tasks. Okay, so the next thing to do after line three is for each task t, we want to, uh, to, to, to compute the gradient. So basically we want to do the inner training loop. So we want to uh, compute those parameters, theta i prime, uh, basically by doing a, a few gradient descent step on those parameters theta. So basically we want to learn, we want to uh, train our neural network uh, that with initial weights theta to solve the task i, so for each task i. Um, yeah, maybe it's not clear at the moment, let's dive into the code, it will make the uh, uh, understanding better. So basically for each task uh, in uh, the sample task, we will perform k training steps. So uh, feeding our parameter p, we need to clone them, otherwise they will be modified, we don't want to, to modify them, so we uh, do not uh, forget to clone them. Uh, and basically we fetch all the param we, we send all the parameters that need to be sent to the perform k training step function and we store um, the uh, the weights after training so theta i prime in this variable that we've created before okay so i think that was line or uh, line okay it was line five in the pseudo code uh, it will also do the line six so compute the adapted parameters with gradient descent um, okay and then we need to uh, also uh, to sample a few data points the i prime so that will be uh, used later on for the meta update so we sample uh, new data points x y also the loss function uh, from the task so task and sample uh, this is by default we use 25 uh, data points we could have generalized that and uh, put that in the argument of the function and basically we append that to the di prime so that was line 8 in the pseudocode um, 
well okay for now okay so basically we uh we sample those uh okay anyway uh, i think it was clearer in the pseudo code okay let's go back to this pseudo code uh, basically uh yeah they, they are roughly the same um but I think yeah, I refer to this algorithm. Uh, basically, there are two ways to use MAML for reinforcement learning and for few shot uh, supervised learning. Uh, this is the one we are implementing. Uh, on the one we've seen before was just general. Uh, so just let's just have a look at this one that is more detailed. So now we need to sample a few data points, the I prime. So this is what we do, um, and we can uh, save them in the I prime. Once this is done, we can focus on the meta update. So uh, we set back the gradient to zero of the meta optimizer, again, to avoid gradient accumulation. Then uh, we will just uh, just we will log the, the, the training loss uh, over time. And then for each task i, we uh, first we retrieve the data point x, x, y, on which we need to do the meta update. We uh, retrieve the uh, parameters theta, uh, uh, theta prime, and then we compute the loss uh, so basically, if we go back to the, uh, the pseudocode, we compute the loss of the um, on the task i on the neural network. So um, on the neural network with weights theta i prime. So not on the neural network with weights theta, but on the uh, on the um, on the model with uh, parameters theta i prime. But we compute the loss with respect to theta, and not with respect to theta i prime. But theta i prime depends on theta. So basically. Uh, we can compute the gradients of this with respect to theta. Uh, theta. So basically, this is what we do. We uh, when we do the prediction, we use the way uh, the weights theta i prime, uh, and then we we compute the loss between the prediction and the target values, and then we can uh, do a backward uh, a backward parse to compute the gradients, uh, and then do um, a meta optimizer step to update the gradients of the meta optimizer. Uh, okay, so we can also log uh, the training loss, uh, but now we are done. We have implemented the MAML paper. We can put all the pieces together. So we'll train on the uh, GPU uh, when possible, of course. Then we can create our parameters of our MLP model. So that was uh, MLP with three layers. So uh, we need uh, we create the uh, the weights on the bias for each uh, for each layer. We use the uh, Xavier initialization, and then we can uh, start training. So we can create the meta optimizer. So we'll use Adam. Uh, we can uh, call the uh, MAML uh, the MAML algorithm to train the uh, to train our, our neural network uh, to learn to solve this task. So we are learning to learn, uh, and then we can uh, plot the figure that I've uh, shown previously. So first we uh, we show after doing this uh, this training, we show what the parameters look like. So basically. Uh, that would be this line, so the line in green. So after training, if I feed data points x to the model, these are the predictions from the model. Um, then we can uh, sample a new task. So we uh, some we call the sample task, sample a new task. That will be a new, our new ground truth. So in red in this figure, we plot the, the new ground truth. And then we'll do uh, 10 gradient step on the uh, new task. So basically, uh, we have learned to run, now doing only 10 gradient step. Uh, so first, it's, uh, the neural network is learned to generalize, and also now we can uh, train on new task very fast, very quickly. Uh, so given only 10 gradient step, we get new parameters, and if we plot uh, what the neural network is learned after 10 gradient step, this is uh, what we see in a uh, in, uh, dark gr uh, green. We see that we fit pretty well the, green, uh, the red curve. Okay, so that's it for our uh, for a mammal algorithm, very short, very concise. Uh, I really hope that was helpful to you. If it was, again, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more content related to machine learning. Thank you.